Hi, everyone, and welcome to the uh, Tech Recruitment Podcast. Today, I have an amazing guest for you. Uh, his name is Radovan Vasic, and he has been in IT for several years. He has a very similar background as I have. So he has uh, worked in IT as a C-level executive, and then he transitioned to IT recruitment. So in uh, this uh, interview, he will uh, tell us a little more about how he is nailing it. And I'm just saying it because uh, before we kicked it off, he shared some of the numbers with me. And I'm like, how can someone with just two sourcers in this boutique agency close so many candidates? So hopefully he will tell us uh, during this interview also publicly. So um um, yeah, like um, I'm, I'm thrilled to have you here. Radovan, uh, why don't we kick it off with uh, what would you recommend to someone who is transitioning to IT recruitment? What, what are your tips for someone uh, to kill it in 2022 in IT recruitment? How are you today? Great. It's a sunny day. It's a little bit cold, but no wind and it's a sunny day. So I'm great. You? Oh, wonderful. How about how about then we transition to uh, to some some takeaways for other recruiters um, because the YouTube channel there are people who are watching those videos even from the United States from India from Europe so they are looking for some some hands on tips or something they can do better or you know uh, for example you mentioned increased conversion rates thanks to your background but people cannot really influence their background they can only influence their activity so if if you would have some tips for them what they could focus on say in 2022 what would you recommend someone who is transitioning to it recruitment mm -hmm. with your 10 10 15 years of experience in this field what would you recommend a recruiter to do this year if we are looking in this in marketing perspective you first of all you need to target right candidate and to speak with him so uh, for recruiters their their target group is developers are developers right mm -hmm. so in my opinion you don't need to speak with another recruiters to speak on, with another say HR, you know, to endorse each other. You know, I had a candidate, oh, yeah, yeah, I relate to you, I had this candidate, and then start to gossip, right? Developers mm -hmm. are uh, lazy, asking for more money, and da -da 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 -da. watching the same podcasts, reading the same books, looking for same webinars, and everyone become the same, you know, you, as, mm -hmm. as a recruiter. You don't need to speak with another recruiters. You need to speak with developers. You need to understand them, their needs, massive pyramid of needs, their seniority level, uh, junior, what is important for junior, what is important for senior. How do you make the ideal personas holistically? What type of person are you looking for? Technically, it's another way. They will have technical assessment, hiring process, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, essentially, you're looking for the person who will match. Oh, that's awesome. For this that's stage. awesome. So my my suggestion for recruiters to speak with developers. Every single recruiters need to have just one senior developer friend and to speak with him. I have in my office senior Laravel developer who are uh, getting five to seven uh, uh, recruiters offers weekly. Mm, wow. So, uh, we are analyzing their approach, et cetera, et cetera. And I speak with Marco. Marco, can you tell me what are you expecting from recruiters? What are the information? Awesome. What, are, what is the secret sauce? What diving mm -hmm. to you? He has... 20 years, 12 years of experience. If recruiters start with, oh, we have lazy bags, we have team buildings, I say, he's gone. He's a senior, married man. He has a child. He need a totally different uh, benefit packet than to go to team building on weekend. You know, so you need to speak with them, to, to go to outside, to, 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 to listen to them, what driving them. And this is the essential. For me, 
I didn't went in any kind of recruiters event, webinar, online event, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to speak with people who is the same as, as I. I will don't learn anything. I'm going to developers day, to developer meetings, to listen about front end, about back end, about architecture, about Uncle Bob, solid principles, clean code, what is software architecture, what is the back end, you need to understand all of this. What is the docker? What is containerization? What is uh, why this? What is the microservices? What is the difference between mono between monolith application with microservices? What is the backend? Do you have a Jenkins? Do, do you have automated uh, staging and, 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 and releasing uh, Scrum, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Uh, what is technology? Is not JS or TypeScript? It's just technology. When you find a great candidate, he is already technology agnostic. I'm speaking about seniors. So yeah, that's awesome. That's 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 awesome. And it's clearly visible that you have the experience from IT, or you you uh, worked as um, the C level executive, right, uh, in the past. And after several years in IT, you have transitioned to IT recruitment, right? So what what actually inspired you to transition from? being the C-level executive to being a headhunter? Uh, actually, two things, maybe two big things. First, I was uh, my uh, education before IT. It's a uh, philology grammar. I read a lot in my earlier stage, so I can verbally express myself. It's a great thing because, you know, you're speaking with developers there, I don't want to generalize things, but most of them are introvert and you need to have approach to them to open them. And I think I'm great in this. This is the first thing. And because I like people, I want to work with people. I finished science psychotherapy courses, NLP, regression, and clearing, etc. Cetera, et cetera. But second thing is that the recruiting is broken. When I was a uh, ship operating officer and ship people officer, everyone in the industry, we need great talents, we cannot find them. And when I find great talent, he told me every company is the same, every company speaking in the same story, I don't have, I don't know for some great company. So in a lean methodology, when I think about to start my own business, what is the problem I can fix? And this is exactly this problem. So my vision is to become human API between IT talents and companies. You can call me Jason. So API is communication protocol. I am speaking business language. I am speaking developer's language. But maybe it's interesting for you to go a little bit back. How I started this business. So I had a vision, I had a mission, I had all of these goals clearly stated. I have my strategy I'm using, Harvard Business School, North Kaplan strategy. Um, but I needed to test my idea, right? Like I want to have my own startups and software. So first thing is idea proof or proof of concept. So I started to, 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 to uh, sending my application to internal recruiter. Every single software company who have a job description for internal recruiter, I send my application. I want to see what is HR sector in software companies in Serbia, what are the HRs, what are the recruiters, how this process is going, because I was C-level in Banja Luka in Bosnia and Herzegovina, so I wanted to check the market in Serbia. Can you believe it? Seven, 17 applications, zero job offers. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Because who could be more qualified to be an IT recruiter than you after so many years in IT, right? Yeah, but in uh, big companies, it's not about recruiting. It's not about clients. It's about politics. It's about mm. power. It's about everything else. So well, at 17, and every single hiring process was the same, like copy paste. First, some girl, 20, 21 years, screaming me. 
And after five or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, she told me, sorry, sorry, Radovan, I need to do this. I saw your uh, background, et cetera, et cetera. I will do my best to have HR director tomorrow. But when HR director see my background, oh, this is threatening on my position. Mm -hmm. I never get back. 70, 17 times. And then I figure out this is the reason they need the recruiting agency because their internal recruiters and process are broken. One more thing about internal recruiters, but I don't want to be a hater. But I, this, is a, this is story for business owners, not for HR sector, not for recruiters. I, I will give you an example. I have a friend, she is internal recruiter in some software company. She is not from HR, from IT, don't understand this. Working for 600 euros monthly without commissions. So she is not engaged to hire or not to hire. First. And she told me, if I put candidate into a hiring process, if candidate is not good, I will have my boss. Eh, 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 eh. But if I reject a candidate, my boss never heard about him. Oh, 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 so, wow. so she's incentivized to reject candidates. Rejecting candidates because their bosses, their salaries, and their own job. And boss, oh, we have five recruiters, not in campus. What we need to do? five uh, hire five more recruiters so you know mm. uh, someone think if you have nine product managers or nine uh, nurses that you will get a baby in one month mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well and then you started your own recruitment business right because you saw this yeah. was broken so yeah. like hey you and don't want to employ me so i'll self-employ myself and funny things <laughs> is those company who reject me now are my clients Mm. Oh, wow. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. So I guess you are uh, much better off at the end of the day with uh, this uh, existing setup, right? And um, before we kicked it off, you also mentioned that uh, you transitioned from some clients to some uh, high-tech companies and you focus on some very advanced positions. Mm -hmm. So uh, would you like to elaborate a bit on, on your recent client? I mean, not uh, exposing the name of the client, obviously, but what are these positions? You know, what excites you these days? What kind of IT positions are we talking about and what is so inspiring about them? Uh, so first of all, I'm an engineer as well. I'm in cryptocurrencies, I'm mining Ethereum since 2017. So <clears throat> I like technology, I like, uh, I like uh, cybersecurity, cryptocurrencies, uh, crypto yeah, generally, and I like low level programming because they're the best engineers, you know, C, C++, algorithms, data structures, someone is developing embedded systems, someone developing hardware, drivers or firmwares, someone working on compilers, on assemblers, someone working in as machine learning, you know, but in machine learning, are you machine learning engineer? Are you a vision, a computer vision engineer or deep learning engineer? And what is the difference? And what is the difference about uh, libraries in Python? What is the data science? What is the data analyst? And do all of these, for me personally, personally, I will speak with those people for free because they are great talents and I have a privilege to speak with those kind of people who are working on maybe on the best hardware in the world. We will heard about this company in next three years. So, uh, and another, it's uh, commercial because web development space is too crowded. A lot of mm -hmm. recruiters. So, you know, React developer and serving 45 position. So I'm one on 45 recruiters who contact him. But for drivers, for firmers, for machine learning, there are not a lot of recruiters because they don't understand web development this well. This is the science fiction. And this space is not crowded. Those engineers are really great. And commissions are super. 
Hmm. Wow, that's that's so cool. You found the the sweet spot, and for some recruiters, the sweet spot is in placing uh, five candidates a year or ten candidates a year or twenty in some cases. Um, and I know you are you are willing to share some of your your recent uh, records in terms of the uh, candidates placed, and the, you, you, we also need to say that you are working sort of as a standalone recruiter, even though you have two assistants, right? But you are the sort of uh, one man show in this sense, right? So uh, the, the number you are about to reveal is like super inspiring, and I'm just so thrilled. Uh, so uh, what what is what is the you know the the what is realistic even? What can people even think about? to be achievable in terms of IT recruitment per year? How many candidates can be placed by someone like you who actually knows what he's doing? So I'm a lazy, per I'm a lazy person he, and I had a burnout five years ago. So I'm not working in full capacity. If I want to work in full capacity and maybe to have one more sorcerer, I can make four positions per month, but with my background. For those recruiters who don't have IT background, for them, from my heart, I suggesting for them to be specialized. You cannot work for full stack because this is a science. People learning 10 years to understand all of this, and you think you will understand this from one paper and five bullet points, and you will engage this person to put into your, you know, you're a recruiter. You're, you will never have a, you will never have a second chance to make a first impression. As a recruiter, you are brand ambassador, you are billboard, you are visit card, you are everything. So you need to be prepared. It's impossible to understand front and back and all of these different positions, and it will be mess. And what is it will be? Frustration, you know, depression, and then you will start to gossip developers. They are lazy, they are making more money. Specialization, you cannot understand the entire system, but you can be front-end group. Go to Udemy. A look for a React course, a look for a View course, a look for Angular course, just to think about terminology. Your mind maps are perfect because when you visualize something, it's 10,000 times better. So to understand what is the front end, what is the difference between web developer, web developer, web designer, what is the UUX developer, but what is the UUX designer? And what is the their job? And if you front-end engineer, are you first be graphic designer, web designer, web developer, and then front-end? This candidate is great with something we design. But if you have a business model with machine learning, with automatization, with algorithms and data structures, you cannot uh, hire graphic designer or someone with this background. You need someone with mathematical background, with data science background, with, with technical mindset, with algorithms and data structure, who is working in backend and who will go in front end, but understand the entire story. So my suggestion for recruiters to, 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 to specialize on one part. Mm -hmm. It's better for you to be expert for, for hunting front end developers, or react developers, then to be full stack recruiter who don't understand that. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. And the whole IT is so complex, right? I don't even remember all these IT uh, terminology myself, just because there is so much of it. And I've been in IT for seventeen years. So, yeah. uh, I, you know, uh, during the program, I always tell to people who transition. The guys don't expect that you will remember it after three weeks uh, because I don't remember it all myself. <laughs> and there is just so much of it, really. The, and the terminology, uh, terminology is too important. You know, because you have a developer who are making 30, 40 euros per hour. So he have, a, he have a money, but don't have a time. If he speak with you, in his head is time investment, you're good. But if it's time wasting, poof. So with a recruiter who don't know terminology, don't understand what is the difference between Java and JavaScript, 
he losing mm-hmm. candidate in two minutes. Yeah, like yeah. So true. So true. I don't want to speak with you because you don't know what are you talking about. Hmm. Yeah, and yeah. That's it. So my suggestion for recruiters to hanging out with developers, to speak with developers, to interviewing them. If I am a recruiter junior, I will pay developers. Please allow me to speak with you, to screening you, to learn something for you. What are your, what are driving you? What are your drivers? What is engaging you? What do you want from recruiter space? So you need to understand them and to learn from them what they are need because they are your clients. You are living from them. They are your best friend. This is the one thing. And second thing, to be competitive, to speak with them. And that also comes with uh, building the talent pool, right? Because once you specialize in, uh, say, front-end developers or database um, engineers, you start building up the talent pool, which is much easier when you specialize instead of uh, having 100 front-end developers, 100 back-end, 100 product. So how, how do you approach this? How do you build up your talent pool strategically? What's... What's your approach? What's your strategy towards uh, increasing if, your talent pool size? If we speak about talent pool, uh, I personally don't believe in talent pool. Mm-hmm. Why? You, I have a senior developer in my office who received five to seven offers from recruiters weekly. Mm. So is, is he in my talent pool? He's my friend working from the same office. Of course not, because he is making five to seven offer per week, you know. So if anyone asks me, do you have talent pool with developers? Yes, I have, but he's not there waiting for me. I need to ask them, are you available in this moment and that moment? So talent pool for me, uh, actually talent pool is good, but from other perspective. When I speak with them, so this Zurich startup, I am uh, my last position was closed. Do you know how I got to this job? No. I hunted their uh, lead developer and he had a great meeting. He didn't want to go in another company, but he recommended me to the uh, owner of this startup to working with me because I know what I'm talking about. So can you imagine the developer are uh, so frustrated with uncompetent recruiters? So they are started to recommend it great recruiters to their employer. Mm. <laughs> so wow. I, hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So uh, talent pool it's a great if you uh, make great relationship. You know how I speaking with you, not from my head from my experience, from my heart, from my intuition. So I'm open and, and people trust me, you know, and trust is the, the, the biggest thing. And uh, the talent pool is actually helping me like that. Uh, one month ago, senior use developer, I hunted him one year ago. Do you have any position for me? Actually, I had. So I closed this position in seven days. Mm, wow. wow. This is the talent pool, but developers start me, not I to start them. Because mm-hmm. you know, with all these offers from recruiters, you cannot be sure that, uh, of course, I have a talent pool, maybe 3,000 developers, but it's mm-hmm. a job of all the big names, all yes. these working on. I just yeah, need yeah. to be repetitive and to engage them. And actually, this is your advice from your script uh, to engage them every single two months, maybe. I have mm. non-stop position and, hi, Michael, uh, two months no, no, no speak, I have another position. And mm. if he ignore me once, twice, third time, fourth time, okay, Radovan, you really have a great position, I want to speak with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. At some point, his project will expire, right? If he's a freelancer, so um, it's yeah. just about capturing engaged. the candidate. Keep them engaged with new positions, and in one time, 
they will figure out your value because if you send them five different positions from different companies, all positions perfectly match with him. He started, oh, he know what he is doing. I, will, I want to speak with you. So in my perspective, this is the target. Well, there was one who I was uh, talking to recently and he was just uh, about to finish his sabbatical. So um, I guess, but that's that's the fancy way to say I was unemployed for three months. These days people say I was on a sabbatical. So <laughs> so that's that's an option. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's, that's a good insight. It also depends on how do we frame the talent pool. It could be a database of contacts or whatever that helps you get in front of those candidates faster. Because a lot of people just use LinkedIn, but if you have a database, a list of contacts, then it is much easier to reach out to potential candidates and get in front of them every two or three months, as you said. Actually, cool, cool. Yeah, that's it's a different mm -hmm. about terminology. I don't uh, perceive this like a talent pool. I perceive this like relationships. Mm -hmm. Better relate. You know, it's emotion. This Alexander who, who recommend me for this Zurich startup. It was a six month after I speak with him. Hmm. But we, when he start to think about recruiter, he feel the emotion, he remember me. Hmm. In tones of another recruiters. So you need to have relationship with people, honest relationship and to be patient. Yeah. In recruiting, you need to be patient. <laughs> everything is from yesterday and everything is a hurry, but if you start to act like this, you will burn out on one, one year. And that's such a great advice because uh, these days when people are looking at weekly KPIs or monthly KPIs, they get so impatient and the commission doesn't come the first month and then they get frustrated. But uh, really, that's that's a long-term game, and uh, you know, the more know, Americans, Americans are counting on yearly, annually, mm -hmm. and this is the same as recruiting. You cannot think about recruiting is the same in August, in September, right? It's a seasonal and everything. I'm counting my success and my performance on yearly basis. Hmm. Yeah, no yeah. power, you know, daily, but you know, I am independent. When, when you are internal recruiter, you have uh, goals, you have uh, quotes and everything you need to, to work on all of this, but you need to be patient. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Okay, okay. And we just kicked off the year 2022. Uh, so um, what would you recommend to other recruiters who may be transitioning to... IT recruitment, what should they do in 2022 to have a successful year and close, say, 40 positions, as you, as you said, is possible uh, per year? As I told, uh, so this will be even more uh, demanding in 2022. You know, it's a great resignation time, salary increase, it's an uncertainty because, you know, it's a corona. But, you know, we'll be uh, ecology shit, uh, you will have uh, carbon credits and everything. So Corona is just preparing us for, for another stage. So it will be high demanding. So uh, 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 they need uh, to be patient again and to try to understand if you want me to sell me a house, you need to know, do I, have, do I have kids if I am alone? Why you want to sell me house with three? Uh, right? Of course, yeah. yeah. Of course, right. So uh, they need to go to muscle pyramid of needs. They need to make distinction between seniority levels, junior entry levels. It's 20 years old, 21, 22, it's a demo. You know, give me, because I'm NDA, I cannot gossip how much money I'm making to making jealous my, my neighborhood. But 
I need to have a great iPhone, great laptop, to live in, in, in center of the center of the city, to be nye, nye, nye. So benefit packet in buildings, everything, they driving them, right? <clears throat> if he's media, he need a more money because now he have a great car, Audi, BMW, Mercedes for new wheels, for sunroof, for, you know, skiing. Da, 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 da. So it's a different type. When we're speaking about seniors, you know, family, two child, he need free time, he need personal and medical uh, uh, coverage, medical coverage for, he, for his family. So benefit packet need to be uh, specialized for family or something. So you cannot speak the same language with junior 20 years old and with senior 30 years old. So need to understand seniority levels, what drives them uh, as a person. Then what their skills are and how those soft skills are more important than hard skills. You can learn react, but it's hard to change your character in 35 years. It's hmm. easier to character. So you need to have a holistic approach and to speak with, with and to think how these personal values and drivers matching with our corporate culture. This is the most important. If this person uh, 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 you think will be great match and interesting for your company, then you will need to start screening them, not before. Hmm. I'm not uh, I'm not asking for CV in front of our interview just LinkedIn profile so I don't want you to waste in your time send me useless documents and everything I don't need anything for you I just need you to listen to me to uh, story tell you about company and everything you need to know in detail, what to expect on this position. Then when you decide to go to the intro process, then we will go to bullet point, how many JavaScript, how many this, how many that, how many da, 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 da. Okay, price tag, and you're going into the process. So maybe this is another suggestion for recruiters to, to, to think about remodeling their process. Because, you know, if you like a girl and you start with her, you need to impress her. You need to be funny. Nye, nye, nye. But if you start, how are you? How is your name? What is your education? Yeah. <laughs> are you doing it yourself? This is the crazy man. And she goes, so you need to engage the developer to take in his attention mm. first and then to start speaking. Hmm. And you need to pitch the company, right? The, you, what you just mentioned is to, to, to talk about the company, what is interesting, exciting about the company, right? At the beginning of the call. So you get yes. the developer excited. Yes, but you pitching a company story junior and senior on totally different pitch, but it's the same company. It's, that makes so much for sense because the benefit not to be present for junior is to be present. <laughs> That's hilarious. Like really, I, I try to step into the shoe of uh, the of the developer, the senior engineer, and I also wouldn't want to go for the team building, right? And it is just so obvious now when you say it, but I haven't ever thought about it uh, this way. That one event, like the team building event, maybe such a huge selling point or such a huge detractor if it is obligation for yes, people yes. like and me who have kids and don't want to send it to be a junior developer hey you have uh, next uh, month you have a rafting on that everything is free included a lot of girls uh, barbecue alcohol swimming pool car with senior developer but it weekend it's a family building not a team building you are not obligated to go to shitty rafting with 20 people 
Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, it's the so same awesome. rap thing, it's the same team building, it's the same story, but different seniority level. So you, yeah. know, you imagine senior working maybe on two different projects, two small childs, working 15 hours daily. And he needs someone to go to team building on weekend. I will that make, makes sense. I will make team building for me myself. I don't need you to pay me fit pass or some gym. I need you to pay me well, and then I will make my own benefit package. So for uh, uh, juniors or for, for uh, 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 overall, you need to have some benefit package. But for different positions, different seniority levels need to be individual benefit mm -hmm. package. And uh, uh, before, earlier, I will start to speak about in our benefit packet is this, that, 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 that. But now, Michael, can you tell me, do you have any preferences about the benefit packet? Yes, I have two childs. I would like to have 27 days yearly of vacation. Okay, I will check with my client. I will like this, this, this. and he make his own benefit packet. So he is engaged. If we allow that, him this benefit packet is good. Another uh, client don't want to go to feed pass, but he is a carting driver. So don't need to pay him feed pass, pay him a carting. Mm -hmm. So everything is possible, but you need to communicate this. Yeah, yeah. And it's very interesting as you talk about it because there are so many different job opportunities, for example, for front-end developers. But what makes it uh, stand out at the end of the day is how you pitch the company and the benefits. Obviously, salary, but that also uh, sort of equalizes uh, around the world these days, you know, uh, with COVID outbreak. Uh, so developers in Serbia as well have elevated so salary expectations, right? Okay, I am working only with in-house product software companies and sourcing candidates for, from outsourcing contacts. They are outsourcing, right? So I am making their lives easier to put them from outsourcing companies working on 10, 10 different projects with tightly tight deadlines, micromanagers and everything to in-house product, to grow together with platform, with company, with all of this. So I need to have this kind of uh, comparative advantage and my pitch in inbox, but actually it's a secret. I am not speaking about benefit packet. I'm not speaking about team buildings or some totally uh, banal things. I'm speaking about how to say what is for them, mm -hmm. what is the platform, what is the tech stack, what is the his position, expectations. And then after that, we will speak about benefits and everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not just, uh, uh, maybe actually this is a good advice for the rest of recruiters. When some candidate asks me, uh, okay, uh, you tell me 25 days, but I want 27. Standard recruiters, oh, you're, then you are not a match, and that's it. I am trying to be not just recruiter and then talent agent. When I speak with this the, the developer, if, he, if uh, he has his own, not to say writer list, but you know, his, uh, then I speak with employer to think about all of this because he already goes through hiring process and so you know this phrase we always do it like that yeah 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 i need to i need to smash this this thing mm. okay but now it's time to change 
to go out on for zone and to speak because you know you don't have a company anymore 100 people to sitting in one open space to have entire business uh, benefit packet for all of that now it's everything is personal everyone working from home you need personal approach mm-hmm. your benefit packet and my benefit packet maybe don't match 20 percent different values different you know i am i'm riding motorcycle i like the skiing i like the, 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 the. maybe you like something different and we have benefit packet for you and me don't work for you don't don't work for me because mm-hmm. it's the same, right yeah 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 it, it has to be personalized which uh, these days shouldn't be a such such a difficult thing right with all the software on the HR side in, in their department. So I guess it's just about really embracing this shift on the client side. Yes. And then you as a recruiter, you just make it happen. You you actually use it to your advantage when selling to candidates. Yes. And when I go back to company, they have fresh information from me because I'm from the market. I'm, mm. I, I'm right. I am there reporting in real time. So smaller companies, startups are much agile, of course, and they're, they're uh, uh, speaking with me and try to adopt some things. But, you know, with corporations, it's a lot of harder because communication channels, C-levels, X-levels, so for information to go from top to down, it's a question, is the same information. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, uh, you, you mentioned so many really interesting things uh, during this interview. And um, I'm just wondering, is there any final advice uh, that you would like to um, to uh, advise uh, recruiters, whether junior or senior, something that really stuck in your mind and you were like, gosh, I want everyone to get better at this or to do better something in IT recruitment? Uh, if I need the, to put this like, Twitter, I like him, and I don't know, 140 characters. Buddy, you need to like developers. They are your friends. They are helping you to making money and to make your own family and make your business. So they are not your enemies. They are not lazy. They are not, how to say, arrogant. They're looking for I don't know how much money. You need to think about them. They finish faculty. They work in six or seven years. Okay, do you think their job is easy? Okay. Just making something in WordPress. Don't burn you with, with React or Angular. And then you will figure out why they're making such kind of money. So they're your, your friends. And my... Uh, the uh, final suggestion here is to speak with them and to like them. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's a- if you don't like them subconsciously, because you know this life is shit when making 500 euro per week per month, he is making five year, five thousand what he is doing, nya, nya, nya. and this approach subconsciously you're sending bad energy. He don't mm. like you. He don't trust you because you're looking for him. But he is doing to making 5,000 euros because the group don't understand. So don't making some um, as, uh, as young as assumptions. Mm-hmm. Yes. Speak with them. If mm. you're internal recruiter, Every single day you go to coffee, just walking into the company. Hey, Michael, just to ask you something. Nya, nya, nya. I spoke with some React developer, but I really don't understand. What is the Redux? I thought it's a state management, but what is this? Uh, developers like to be asked for opinion, but you need to ask them. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's a great but that's a great advice to actually enjoy talking to developers. And uh, that's that's like really an eye-opening, uh, and eye-opening to, suggestion. To be present on developers event, not for recruiters event. Mm-hmm. That's, that's really a, a great suggestion because um, if recruiters don't enjoy interacting with developers, 
it sets the wrong uh, attitude and uh, they can smell it right uh, when when they interact with recruiters so you that's know, uh, verbal communications is about seven to eight percent just seven to eight percent everything is about your unverbal your mm. body language your communication your your attitude and everything with they speak so i'm an engineer i never been developer i wanted to be but i don't have this mindset i, I try I try try and this is the reason why i'm putting my head down for developers mm. because they are making something that i'm i'm not able to make but i'm not jealous i'm putting mm. my head down developer okay don't worry i will help you you know developers are brave guys actually if they are, <laughs> so enjoy talking with them. Yes, if they are in their mind thinking about you, do like them and enjoy your conversation, they will help you. But if mm. you start in first minute to screening them uh, rigidly with bullet points, don't know what you're talking about and start screening them, but you hunting them, causing mm. them in five minutes. I guarantee you. Very cool, very cool. Okay, well, uh, thanks thanks a lot for these uh, wonderful suggestions. Uh, recruiters from around the globe uh, can learn a lot from you. And also uh, the numbers you shared are very inspiring. So uh, I guess uh, for a lot of people, this was an opening discussion. So uh, where can people learn more about uh, you and uh, your business? I have a website, but you know, I don't put too much money on marketing, as I told you earlier, because they are hunting me now. And <laughs> okay. need to have marketing, but is everyone interested? He can actually talk with me. Okay, so I'll link I your LinkedIn profile, the URL. I have a website. My company is named Habit. Mm -hmm. It's a oh, it's your career growth become become your new habit. But mm -hmm. Habit is human, happy between IT talents and companies. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So okay. this is this is my company and I have a LinkedIn profile, you know. So okay, so I'll I'll link these uh, URLs uh, in the uh, YouTube video comments and also in the podcast uh, show notes mm -hmm. and people can reach out directly to you in case they have any questions or business opportunities yes. uh, in Serbia. Yeah. And one more suggestion for recruiters, the last one, it's, is to use your educational channel and everything because you are making such a great job. My colleagues using your minds map daily and your uh, ebooks and everything. So it's a great, great, great asset. And you already figure out that they need to be technically strong to be able to speak with those guys, you know, and you're making great job and addition on your Profile. Maybe for you, it's advice to start uh, making some developers regular event. Yeah, that's a great one. I guess I'll really organize this. Uh, I was already thinking about it when you mentioned it first time. I uh, took some notes. So developers, uh, great. developers consider it done. Happy. You know, there are no positions. They are not selling. Just hanging out. What? Uh, for developers to understand the recruiters' point of view, and for recruiters to understand the developers' point. Of view. And this is my last sentence. Very cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks a lot for uh, for joining us. We will keep in touch. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.